Assalamualaikum Victoria and Abdul by Shrabani Basu Queen Victoria was proclaimed as Empress of India in 1877. She was intrigued by the land that she ruled but had never visited. John Tyler was a superintendent at Agra Jail where Abdul Karim worked as a clerk. Prisoners there were trained and employed as carpet weavers as part of their rehab. In 1886, 34 prisoners went to London to demonstrate carpet weaving at, at, at an exhibition. Karim assisted Tyler to organise the trip. When the Queen visited the exhibition, Tyler gave her two gold bracelets chosen with Karim's assistance. The Queen asked Tyler to recruit two Indian attendants who would be employed for one year during her Golden Jubilee celebration the following year. Tyler trusted Karim and asked if he would like to go to England and be the Queen's orderly for one year. Karim understood the word orderly in the context of a person who accompanies a sovereign on horseback. It is a higher position than a than an orderly in the British Army, who was a soldier attending to an officer. When he accepted the offer, he did not realise he would be required to wait on the Queen. The other person selected was Mohammed Bush. The Queen, like many women in her position, had few friends and was lonely, especially after the passing of her husband. When Karim and Bush were introduced to her, the Queen and Karim's eyes met briefly and something clicked. Karim and Bush spoke little English at the time and the Queen arranged for them to have English lessons. While Karim was attending to her and as his English improved, they had conversations about India, its people and culture. The Queen was pleased with Karim. She asked him to teach her Urdu and enjoyed their daily lessons. The Queen's household became alarmed when the two became close. It reminded them of her relationship with the late John Brown, her Scottish servant. It was unbecoming for a Queen to be close to someone of humble origin. Meanwhile, Karim was unhappy that he was required to do menial tasks for the Queen, which he felt was demeaning. The Queen was surprised when he explained it to her and expressed his wish to return to India. She was not aware of the misunderstanding about what the Indian attendants were required to do. She quickly rectified the matter by promoting Karim as a munshi or teacher and raised his salary. The other Indian attendants received the news with a mixture of pride and an envy. The household, on the other hand, was displeased. The Queen trusted Karim as she increasingly relied on him to assist her in daily affairs. The household's resentment toward him grew. They plotted to get rid of him. They accused him of lying to the Queen about his background. They accused him of using his position to benefit himself and his family, which was not unfounded. But then again, how many people in the same position wouldn't? They even tried to accuse him of treason due to his friendship with a lawyer who was supposedly involved with a rebel group in India. The Queen defended Karim the same way she defended John Brown and thwarted every attempt to get rid of him. She knew they resented him not just because of his humble background, like John Brown, but also due to racism and prejudice. To Karim's credit, he never said a bad word about those who tried to smear him. What no one understood was that the Queen cherished John Brown's company and later Karim's because they saw her and treated her as a person. She was not just their Queen. The Queen knew that the moment she was gone, her family would kick Karim out. She made sure he would have a comfortable life after she was gone. Just days after her death, her son, King Edward, ordered all letters she sent to Karim to be confiscated and burned. 
He did not want any trace of a munshi. After serving the queen for 14 years, the king kicked him out like a criminal. He would be turning in his grave if he knew a book has been published about Karim and his mother. Although the book is mainly about Victoria and Abdul, it also gives a glimpse of the political situation in India under colonial rule. I thought it odd that Karim and other Indian attendants felt honoured they were chosen to serve a queen of a country that colonised their land. The queen's household were not exactly thrilled with their presence. After her death, her son couldn't get rid of them soon enough. You can get this book using the links below. If you like listening to me babbling about books, please subscribe and turn on notification. Thank you.